Howdy. Let's chat about the Inspector Singh series by Shamini Flint real quick. Uh, a couple of them right here. Ignore the corgi sounds. Okay. So this was up there with the Purving Mysteries books is uh, my favorite series that I found last year. Both are sort of on the periphery of the cozy mystery as like a strictly defined genre for different reasons. But as much as I adore those books, I do need a break from amateur sleuths running like a bookstore slash pet spa sometimes, and like you probably do too. <laughs> I'm also super excited that I just now found out it was announced in November they're going to make a TV adaptation of these books. I'll stick a link to that article below. Uh, it looks like I'm going to be buying a month of BritBox whenever this comes out, and I absolutely can't wait for that. Especially if it means I have more people to talk about these with. <laughs> Um, if you've noticed, a lot of my videos have been about series set in Southeast Asia. That's not intentional. Uh, I don't know why, but every mystery I've picked up with that connection lately has just absolutely killed it. Kind of literally. So, Inspector Singh's a middle-aged Sikh man of Indian heritage who lives in Singapore and works on the police force there. He is constantly at odds with his wife, his overbearing boss, and his doctor. He's this crotchety, pudgety, and in some ways unlikable little man who believes that the key to solving most homicides lies in deciphering the behaviors and motivations of the people involved, and that this is really becoming a lost art in the age of CSI and fancy forensics tech. Through some admittedly convoluted situations explained as a supervisor's efforts to be temporarily rid of him, uh, the series is able to skip around to a different setting in each book, as you can probably infer from the titles. These feel very much like Hercule Poirot novels to me, much just because of how Singh's character is and all this traveling. Most are in Southeast Asia, the last one is in England. Each book does tend to have an environmental or social justice theme. The first one, A Most Malaysian Murder, especially does what it can to convey to the reader the dire situation of illegal logging in Borneo's rainforest and the atrocities committed against the indigenous peoples living there. The author has even said herself that she's trying to make up through her writing for the time that she spent working as a corporate lawyer. <laughs> she's a Malaysian author. Uh, she's lived in Singapore for quite a while now, and it seems that she also did a lot of traveling and interfacing with different international businesses for her work that's really equipped her to write these stories as well as she has. I also appreciate seeing much more complex takes on things like colonialism and local social dynamics through these characters than I recall seeing in books by Western authors, you know, when it's relevant, um, if they engage with that at all. I'm used to seeing pretty America brain takes that don't really go beyond just looking at the relationship between the West and whatever non-Western setting you're in and just kind of implying like colonialism bad. I will say you'll find some terms and behaviors in the book that maybe don't jive with your expectations of a progressive author, but I think that's the fact that the series started over a decade ago and that Flint just writes very imperfect characters. Considering it was still illegal to be gay in Singapore when these books were written, it's not surprising that a lot of the characters are varying degrees of blatantly homophobic. It is a little startling if you're used to like the more sanitized dialogue you find in mainstream writing now, but it would be the same way if I set a story in my hometown. I think the narrative message that such views are harmful is still very clearly there. Another thing that was interesting to read in these as an American was how complicated some of the intersections between religious and secular laws become, and that's relevant to the plot particularly in the first book. So by religious law, I mean laws that are respected and I think also enforced by the secular government of a country, depending on the citizen's religious affiliation and kind of like the jurisdiction there, I guess. Besides all of that, though, Flint just does a fantastic job of painting the scene and crafting interesting characters for you with small details. These are very compelling, well-paced stories with decently intricate mysteries. You always learn a fair bit about the setting and get a glimpse of the local cuisine through Singh's frequent excursions to find beer and a good curry for lunch. I think my favorite so far, keep in mind, I actually still have two left to go, would be the fifth, a curious Indian cadaver, although I rank them all pretty closely. I think my least favorite is the fourth, a deadly Cambodian crime spree. 
because I thought the actual mystery part of that book sort of fell through in comparison to the others. But uh, you do learn a lot about the Khmer Rouge in that book and just the mind-bogglingly horrific effects of that that are like very much still felt to this day. If you aren't familiar with that indescribably bleak chapter of history, as well as the role of the United States in it, uh, you should remedy that. I had heard of it, but I honestly didn't know anything about it until a couple of years ago, and, you know, I considered myself to already be someone who was pretty interested in world history at that point. We're really not taught enough about it here. So, in the spirit of keeping things fairly brief, uh, I'll wrap this up now. I think these are great, and I want everyone to dive into them ASAP so that maybe Shamini Flint will feel compelled to write an eighth book since the most recent one was published back in 2016. Especially with the TV show coming out. So yeah, get on that. And uh, 